кажется, лица страхи. Welcome to the session. Uh, the title is First Step of Hacking, okay, which is something that you'll get to learn uh, once you join UPS as part of the cybersecurity course. Okay, uh, So we're just looking at first step, right? We're not looking at hacking and doing all sorts of things. It's just a basic step, all right? So I'm a professor with UPS. Um, a little about me. So that's how I look like. I have around 25 years of IT experience uh, within cybersecurity, cloud computing, IT for operations management, data center management. Okay, that's what I usually uh, did in my career. Okay, I work with a lot of uh, multinational organizations, uh, British Telecom in Gurgaon, Pfizer in Noida, Cement in Gurgaon. Evil so in US, uh, SafeNet in Noida, HP in US. Okay. Uh, so, primarily being uh, being an IT industry uh, professional, uh, my research and academic interests are in uh, cybersecurity, digital forensics, IT management and operations, uh, information security, cloud computing. Okay. Uh, till date, uh, regarding publications, one patent, 26 research papers, seven books in various international journals. Okay, uh, so I'm a PhD uh, in computer science, uh, primarily focusing on cloud security. Um, currently, the role that I play are uh, as professor uh, of cyber security and digital forensics at the University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, Dehradun. I'm also on the advisory board of EC Council Computer Hacking and Forensic Investigation. Uh, so uh, this is a global uh, advisory board where we tell CHFI uh, EC Council on what to include and how to include, or what to add into their uh, course curriculums, how to go about delivering CHFI course. I am also a subject matter expert uh, for CompTIA uh, on uh, various on uh, security class. Okay. So the session agenda that we have today is we look at the phases of hacking. Right. Uh, we look at the first step of hacking uh, as a major focus area for us today. We look at some reconnaissance tools. Okay, what tools we can use as part of that first step? Uh, we learn to use Google. All right. Uh, we'll try and search for information that you didn't know actually exists. Uh, we'll gather information without uh, alerting our targets. Okay, that is one thing that we always will want to do. Okay, and why we do or how we do it, I'll show you. Uh, and uh, finally, we'll try and hide information within images. Okay. So this is something that we'll touch upon. Not, we'll not go into detail, but I would expect uh, you guys to uh, actually play around with me. Okay. Open up your Google uh, or any browser that you have, and then whatever I tell you, try and execute that, run that, and see what you can get. Okay. So phase of hacking. When I say uh, hacking, all right. Now, hacking is not a good, uh, it's, people don't take it in a good way, right? If you tell somebody that, you know, I am hacking someone, right? Uh, so they'll say, oh my God, he's a dangerous guy, you know, stay away from him, all that stuff. But actually, hacking is not a bad uh, thing at all, right? Hacking is basically identifying weakness in computer systems or uh, networks, right? Or within, even in people. Uh, the idea is to exploit those weaknesses and gain access. Now, gaining access can be uh, done in various ways, which where you can tell the people that you know I've gained access and you know you need to rectify uh, your weakness so that they become alert and they are safe. For example, if somebody is using a very simple password, right, I crack that password. Tell him you know I cracked your password. It was a very simple password. Uh, please make it strong right, so that nobody else is able to actually uh, not get into your Gmail or you know your Facebook or even your computer systems password, right? So that is typically hacking as we call it. Right? Now, uh, now th this was actually hacking a couple of years ago, where you would find exploits, weaknesses, and rectify them. But over a period of time, uh, malicious people came into uh, the world of IT. 
if they started hacking and gaining and doing gains for their own benefits. So that is why ethical hacking became another buzzword. So many think that hackers or hacking refers to some uh, self-taught kid or you know some Winston uh, or somebody who's a rogue programmer, right? skilled at modifying computer hardware or software, which can be used in ways outside the original developer's intent. Okay, but uh, this is a very narrow view right? uh, that does not actually begin to encompass the wide, you know, actually range of reasons why somebody turns into a hacker. Hacking is typically, it's a, it's a technical uh, nature in nature, like creating some deposits or malwares or EXEs, uh, deploying them in, on some machine and then exploiting them. Now, hackers can also use psychological tricks to actually trick the user into uh, clicking some malicious link that they, they sent or you know some file that they provide to them and then gathering some personal data. Now, this is typically called a social engineering, which is most common uh, type of attack or most common hacking that is going on. Okay. Now, why it is going on? Because computers have become mandatory okay, uh, to run any successful business, to communicate with people, you know, talk to them, to talk to your friends. You need systems. Right? Now, when I say computers, these can be your handheld devices, smartphones, Androids, laptops, desktops, even servers. Now, it is not enough to have uh, isolated computer systems. You need to be networked and uh, to facilitate com communication with external people right outside your house outside your country out globally right now the problem here till this point it is good right you're communicating with people you're sending out emails to them and you, you're happy right? you, they send you information you send them information you interact with them but this also exposes you to the outside world and of course hackers right so when i say hackers uh, the bad guys so they use computers to commit frauds, okay? uh, frauds, acts like privacy invasion, stealing corporate and personal data. Okay? Uh, cyber crime usually costs many organizations billions of dollars every year. Okay? And uh, businesses now, uh, whether they are big or small, corporates or anyone, uh, they need to protect themselves against uh, such attacks, which is why uh, there's a lot of need uh, for ethical hackers or people with cyber skills. Okay, and uh, going on, uh, say 2025, 2030, uh, this is only going to increase. It might evolve. Okay, right now we are protecting uh, desktops, laptops, smartphones. It might evolve to uh, IoT devices, uh, hand, you know, driverless cars, drones. You know, it might. But overall, protection of data, protection of uh, fraud, privacy invasion, stealing uh, on a remote manner uh, will certainly be there. Okay, so let's look at the phases of hacking. The first phase is typically called as reconnaissance. Okay, uh, this phase, uh, this gathers information about potential target without uh, the target uh, knowledge or alerting them. Okay, the, the second phase is scanning, where you take that information that you discovered about the people or company on in the first phase and examining, uh, try to find out some weakness or gaps which can help you get inside their networks. Okay, so that is scanning. The third phase is gaining access. Once you've scanned a system, you typically know their weakness. You start to exploit those weakness, which is basically called as vulnerabilities. Okay, you try to gain access into the target systems. And uh, this is where the real bad hacking or the bad part starts. Okay, so the third phase, first phase, you find out information then you discover gaps and third part you get inside. Okay. The fourth phase basically ensures you maintain access, right? whether it's your target machine or you know gathering data or taking out data, copying data, uh, or just, just even if you don't want to take out data, you just want to keep access there for future exploitation. Okay. And attacks. For example, uh, Jeff Bezos phone. Uh, right. So, the attackers they sat on his phone for at least three and a half years four years before actually taking out some data from his machine right? so reconnaissance uh, so oh, sorry the fifth phase is basically covering track once you've taken out all the data right you gained access you copied all the data you've taken out the good stuff that you wanted okay now you need to remove your logs cover your tracks and get out okay 
So the first, the fifth phase basically involves covering your tracks, which is removing logs, okay, uh, so that uh, you can continue to own the system or use the system as you like, and remove any evidence because see, uh, whenever you get inside somebody's machine, uh, if it is corrupted, they might have a team. Okay, that team is typically a security team, uh, which is doing digital forensics. Right? The forensics guys are always on the lookout for logs. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about logs. So anything you do on your system, once you power on your system, you log into your system, you open, say, Adobe Acrobat, you open Word, PowerPoint, you browse, okay, or you upgrade your browser, okay, you install a new software, you install a new mouse okay, on a USB port, anything you do, logs are created on the machine. Okay? Every step, everything is logged or recorded, okay. So the fifth phase actually involves deleting all those logs because everything is now logged, right? It's it's there on the somewhere on the network, right? On the network systems. Now the hackers, if they don't want to get discovered, they need to cover their tracks and delete all this information, right? So this is the fifth part. So we'll focus on um, on the reconnaissance uh, for this session, right? So reconnaissance is basically the first step of hacking, which is also called as data gathering. Right? Just basic information basic stuff. Uh, in this step, uh, the attacker basically gathers information about the target in two ways. One way is active reconnaissance, which involves direct communication with the target. Okay, and, and it may be a friendly way, you know, scan, uh, you know, sending an email saying hello, how are you? Can you help me? In a very simple way. Again, not alerting them. Another way is passive, which is indirect ways of collecting information of the target using social media, online sites, anything that you can have. Okay. Scanning, again, I'm just repeating all this for a few, I saw a few people joining late. So uh, scanning is basically an important uh, step now before the attack phase happens. Uh, so the attackers explore weak points, right? You gathered some information in first phase, then you start to examine the weaknesses that are there in the systems. So you collect data, deploy some tools, you find out tools, right? Versions, anything that you can find out, which can help you, you know, tell you about the gaps and weaknesses that they are there in the systems or the networks. Third step is basically gaining access, which is actually the hacking, actual hacking takes place in, in this phase, where in order to get, uh, um, you know, uh, to be successful, uh, you need to gain the access inside the target network for the application. Okay? And then here you use tools and techniques. Okay. Uh, fourth phase, you maintain access. So as soon as the hacker gets some access into the system, they want to keep it for future use. Okay? But again, without letting the user know about it or the teams or the IT security teams. So there are some malicious files available on the online to do this. Okay? Once the attacker maintains access, he, he or she can use it later on you know, in some future attacks. Okay. Covering tracks is again the last phase where uh, they cover all the tracks, delete all the data to ensure they don't get caught, right? And don't get into any legal trap. So we'll look at uh, reconnaissance um, in this session, okay? Now reconnaissance again is an important tool for penetration testers also, the guys who are actually doing ethical hacking, okay? Uh, and it's a beginning of beginning point for many data breaches also. So the process involves gathering information about target system that can be used to find flaws and vulnerabilities. So in reconnaissance, the first step, uh, we basically select a target, okay? We spy on it to get gather as much information as possible. And this information should be available over the internet, right? We don't go into their offices or, you know, we don't go into machines. We just find out whatever is there on the internet outside over the, over the cloud or available anywhere. Okay, so and we don't ensure uh, there's no active engagement or alerts are being generated. Okay? So the attackers basically at this point, at this phase, the first phase, they act, uh, act like detectives. Okay, so they gather information to actually understand their target. What is the level of that target? How strong or how weak is that target? They are about to attack, and uh, they try to delete detail everything right they try to write down create you know some map or some you know, frame about that target uh, which can be 
you know, as easy as examining uh, email lists, open source information, or any anything that they can find out about people who are maintaining it, who are there, okay, and they hone on on the security aspect of the technology to study the weaknesses there. So that the idea is to use the vulnerabilities to their advantage. Now this involves something called as footprinting, okay, reconnaissance. Within that, this the first step is footprinting, okay. So footprinting is basically you blueprint an organization's security profile, which is uh, trying to find out or truly understand the target. And when I say target, it can be a machine, it can be a human, it can be a data center, it can be a domain, anything, right? Which is anything that I'm going to attack. Then you gather uh, target information using passive manual searches, right? So the idea or the why we are doing uh, footprinting is basically to search publicly information uh, available uh, globally on the internet. So you use inter internet to find out interesting and sensitive information, not any information that is there. Right? We don't want all the information. We just want to have specific interesting information. Okay. And uh, the idea uh, is to reduce the area of attack because you want to focus on that target. You just want to find out its vulnerabilities weaknesses or gaps and then try to exploit them. You also want to know the security posture or level of the your opponent or the target, right? You don't attack people who are stronger than you, right? You, you, you stay away from them. But you still want to know the security level of the guy you are wanting to attack. Right? So the idea is to build an information database and draw a certain map around that target. Okay, so that is reconnaissance and footprinting is all about okay so selecting target spying ensuring no active engagement because you don't want to alert them right so after footprinting you've done the basic part right? acting as a detective you do some scanning right? so in scanning you are actively actively identify some operating systems ports services versions which tells you about the vulnerabilities that are existing on the attackers or the targets systems. Uh, this is more active, you, so you get a more, a better clear picture of that target. The third part is enumeration, okay, uh, where you create a complete picture of the target's security posture. Uh, here some alerts can get generated because you are actually, uh, you know, doing some kind of a direct, uh, direct, direct contact. Uh, so the idea is to identify poorly protected resources and accounts. Right? By using some active connections, you might you know, try to do some real-time hacking or something and do some directed queries which can result in alerts right any so typically what happens is whenever you want to uh, attack any system or do anything on any machine it would generate an alert the IT team or the security team they receive that alert uh, the security operations team for example and they look at the alert and say okay it's it's a false alert or you know, it's a positive alert so this innovation it, it typically creates a an alert because it's a direct contact that you uh, typically end up generating. Uh, so, but the advantage is you gather names of users, groups, host machines. You, you, you tend to get, gather a lot of information. You also get, tend to gather services or IP schemes that they are using, right? configuration settings, audit uh, settings, or any application they are using, what banners they are displaying, DNS, SNMP. Now, all these are technical stuff, but uh, you gather a lot of stuff in the enumeration part. So that is the advantage, but then this alerts the target also, that somebody is trying to gather information about yourself. Okay. So let me tell you now, I want you guys uh, to open your web browser. Okay. So I'll tell you about tools whenever you want to you know, talk to people or you know, want to uh, do some basic hacking. You don't want to tell them your email ID, right? For example, uh, you would have uh, one, one Gmail ID or maybe two Gmail IDs. Right? But, uh, and you know, typically just for registering somewhere or you know, doing anything, you are required to share your email ID, right? So, and that's just a one-time job that you want to do. So actually there's no need of creating a Gmail or anything. You can use a, something called a 10-minute mailbox, right? So let me open that.
So I hope you guys can see my screen now. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is basically a 10-minute email. Okay. Uh, whenever you open this temp email dot org, uh, so for you get an email ID for 10 minutes. You get a name, and you get a domain. Right. And you actually you can send a email and you get a mailbox. Now this is just for 10 minutes. Okay. You you see this time. So nine minutes twenty six seconds. So it's already taking. So if I send an email to somebody, I would also receive it, but it's only for ten minutes. It will be gone. Okay. So this is the advantage of using such you know temporary IDs or temporary uh, stuff, uh, where hackers or you know people who don't want to actually reveal uh, you know any email or anything about themselves, they typically end up using this. So if I send you an email from this. Uh, if you reply back within eight minutes fifty nine second, I want to receive it here. Right? Otherwise, it would be just born and junked. Right? So I would, you know, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, whenever you're trying to do anything, uh, try and use this uh, ten minute uh, temp email dot org ten minute email. Uh, there's no harm in doing that uh, because uh, you just want to register somewhere, get some information, and that's it. You don't want to go there again. So you can always use this, and it's available easily. It's a free. Thing. The second thing that I want to show you is uh, fake number generation. Okay. So a lot of times, whenever you uh, go to any website, you are supposed to give a phone number. Okay. Now, to give a phone number, uh, say you just need to give your, and you don't want to give your own phone number, right? So these are there are websites which can actually give you a lot of stuff. Uh, depending on your location, okay, um, and you can generate your own phone numbers, whatever you like, wherever you like, okay, depending on what location, what country. Uh, so, do that. Let's look at India, okay. So, easily you can get a lot of numbers, right? Dash numbers or any any numbers that you want. Uh, for example, even for UK. So these these things these kind of things are very useful whenever you are trying to register somewhere and you don't want to register again. Okay, so all these things can be easily used. So this is fake numbers dot org and the country after that or a 10 minute email temp dash mail dot org. Okay, so you get a email ID for 10 minutes. All right. Okay. Now let's look at a few more tools uh, which can be used to collect information about people. Uh, one of them is uh, census. Okay. Another we'll talk about hunter, and uh, there's one more that is called as showdown. Okay. So we we'll look at these three tools. Right. So census, hunter, and showdown. So all the uh, all the students, I would uh, again request you open these links on your web browser. Right. So census is basically it helps you discover uh, a lot of uh, vulnerabilities um, that are there uh, on your uh, systems or other people's systems, right? And it helps you search and search certificates. You can also search websites, for example. Okay. So if I want to use I want to find out about UPES. Okay, so and again, the idea is not to alert UPES for the target. Right? So quickly, it will tell me it's a UPES, it's a university in Dehradun, uh, or this, this. Okay, the domain is this one. This is the IP address. I can still go inside and see what are they using. Okay, what is the Alexa rank? Okay, so what protocols are being used? Now again, uh, so I'm looking at from a hacker's uh, this thing. Okay, so. UPS has two ports. Okay, they are hosting on port 80, which is using HTTP. They are using on also hosting on port 443, which is HTTPS. Okay, 
and what is the page, page title says it says upas university in dehradun for admission okay uh, what version are they using it is tls version 1.2 okay aes 124 which is pretty secure okay so now i am looking at things which are there available on the internet and looking at ways to attack right so all these things i can quickly note down and then find out okay they are using this this is what should i use you know how can i attack right heartbeat okay this so this is the vulnerability so this is already disabled so which is very good okay and they using some certificates okay now i'll tell you quickly about certificates if you open any website okay? um, you typically get this box here okay so this is uh, this tells you actually if a connection is secure or not right and if it is secure it should be green and not red okay so if i go inside um, so it will tell you information if i go to so it says uh, census they bought this certificate from cloudflare okay it expires on 9th october 2020 okay so as a hacker uh, i would wait for 9th october when this expires and then quickly try to attack them because this site would then become uh, would not be so much secure right and i can also view this certificate right? so they bought it from san francisco okay or uh, it's valid till 10/9/2020 okay this is the domain which is okay uh, they are using some algorithm here okay they have a key and they also have a public uh, value if i if i am able to crack this okay uh, so then i uh, already have that public key or the public secret key but the problem is it will take me many years to crack it so see this thing right so if i am able to crack i have a super computer and a huge machine which can crack this elliptic uh, 256 key size okay then uh, i can safely say that i can crack you know, get inside the systems crack their own systems or you know even change the website okay? i can also see a serial number okay now all these things are very useful for uh, people who want to attack people who want to fish uh, so phishing okay uh, you basically sending out uh, emails to these guys uh and enticing them to release more and more information about themselves right and when you uh, send out something like this right you can send out this serial number to their head of it for example okay uh, and saying you know hey your serial number is about to expire okay uh, and i'm calling you from uh, this cloud player company okay and i want you to change it okay right? so they would obviously double check this okay if the it head Uh, checks this is a yeah, the serial number is fine so this guy is obviously talking sense okay and they might even end up paying you or you know doing all sorts of things so that is a very simple way of you know using phishing to attack people or you know to entice them okay okay well let's come back to census okay so this is how i can use any uh, website to get more information i can get more information as much information as uh, possible right i can also view the page Uh, and then find out what are the interesting things that i can find out over here gather information right aes 128 so short to 56 right so i can find out i can do a google search or you know various tools or uh, with that can crack this okay so that is one way of doing such searches okay um okay so hunter and shodan let's look at uh, these so hunter is a basically it's a network it's a cloud tool which can tell you a lot of information about any company uh, you know for example i want to attack a company and want to find out the people uh, or you know found find out their designation their names and everything but i don't know their names right so for example ps.tc.n okay so now i don't know anything about assuming i don't know anything about ups right? so it tell me a lot of uh, people what are they okay talent management devrasmith ushanath general manager Ashish Bhardwaj, 
somebody from information system management, somebody in Kohli, international business, and I also get his email ID. Vitas Marula, Vitu Tanwar, okay, Ashok Sahu, right? And you, you can find out so much information by just clicking, uh, you know, here and there. And nothing fancy about it. So this is a very easy way of finding out, or, you know, about people or, you know, also you can verify it. Uh, for example, and this one is for the marketing team, for example. Uh, so a lot of students joined uh, here, right? You can also verify uh, their email IDs here. So for example, or even if you receive any email ID right, from people, so you can use Hunter and then it would tell you whether it's a, a valid ID or not. So, professional, invalid, valid. Right? So, another tool uh, that can be used to gather information is called Shodan, right? All of you use uh, Google. Right now, this is the Google for Internet of Things. Right? Now, Internet of Things are those devices uh, that are connected on the internet having some IP address okay, and they are being used to by humans to control them. Right? For example, your TVs, your Alexa, your mobile phones, or which are running some kind of a portal which is receiving some information. For example, uh, your Apple Watch, okay, which is actually looking at how many steps you are using or what is your heart rate at that time. Right? So all that information uh, all such devices are basically called as Internet of Things. These are things that are there on the internet, you know, serving us or helping us in various ways. Okay. Now, what I can do is I can use this. Now, since we put all the all these devices on the internet and we are very happy, okay, saying you know we got so many devices and they are helping us. Alexa, for example, right? it's connected to the internet. Uh, you tell Alexa sing a song. It starts singing something. Uh, you might say Alexa, uh, tell me you know, whatever <coughs> is there uh, available uh, on the net, okay, and then tell you the news and everything, right? So, uh, you know, things like these uh, are very dangerous also, but they are actually, uh, you know, helping us over time. And now I've collected some, uh, you know, very interesting and funny uh, queries, right? So, you need to enter some queries here, and then it tells you about various things. So, for example, let me search. Um, I'm searching for electronic billboards. Okay, let's see if I'm able to find anyone. Okay. So it found some billboards. Okay, so it tells it typically the way it works is it gives you an IP address and some ports. All right. It, you get an email ID. Okay, you get the location what it is running, how it is running, okay, so it is running on port 444, four, 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 HTTP, okay, and there's something that is being sent out, received, okay. So let's see if I am able to open this or not. Okay, this does not exist, but then it actually exists, so it tells me, uh, so Q4 uh, right now in US, okay, but I'm not allowed to enter inside it, which is good. Uh, let me check another one. The sad part here is uh, we need to hit and try and, you know, try and find out uh, various ways. Let me look at some traffic lights, for example, a red light camera or something, okay.
Okay, so this one is again that uh, Samsung billboard. Okay, so it's playing something. All right, um, 99 uh, cents only. So this billboard player is probably uh, it's most likely a Samsung electronic billboard. Okay, uh, running something. Okay, the outside temperature is zero. It's not recording basically. Okay, it's operating in. It's right now running. Okay, 3 a.m. is the U.S. time date. Okay. Uh, and the playlist, it's it has some playlist that is being scheduled, so it's already it's running uh, and up and running. Okay? So I can easily look at things like this and then find out uh, what all is running here. So if I look at um, so it's what is for three as well. So uh, I told you about certificates, right? So see, this one is not secure, right? While uh, another one that we looked at, uh, this one, right? It was connection is secure. Right. So this is a very simple way of finding out uh, devices that are vulnerable. Okay, now why is it not secure? We can again find out. So let's see. So this does not, it does not have any ownership information. Uh, so it does not encrypt anything. Okay, so that is why it's a pretty simple site that is not secure and can be easily hacked. Okay. Uh, Okay. Let's look at something else. Um, let's look at uh, now. We're looking at uh, why we're doing it is because we are looking at uh, finding out uh, vulnerable devices on the internet that people have left there. Right? So let's look at uh, some voter uh, voting machines. Okay, voting systems in US. Let's see. Okay, not available. No, we don't have them right now. Um, okay, let's look at another interesting one. Um, a lot of time you have pay phones, right? In US, even in India, uh, you have a lot of pay phones. Okay, this one, I think they're off. So this one actually uh, used to work a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a hack for uh, finding out prison pay phones. Okay. So anything um, inside prisons, uh, these can be used. Okay, let's look at some webcams. Finding out, okay, that's okay. Uh, another thing that I wanted to discuss uh, with you is Wayback Machine. Okay, now this Wayback Machine is actually a internet based uh, portal that is saving all internet archives. Uh, for example, uh, Facebook. Right? I want to know how Facebook looked you know, X years ago. Okay, it records everything. So uh, it started off in 1998. Okay. So, the first uh, Facebook that came up was something like this. Okay, it's not available, but that is how it used to look like. Okay, uh, if you go further on, okay, 2005, how it got updated, uh, what all changes were made. If you see these links, it would tell you a lot of changes were made, uh, you know, on various dates, various times, and actually you get all these links. So this Wayback Machine actually saves all your data, okay? Whatever machines, whatever system portals you create, it actually it actually shows you the older version of. So this is how uh, in 2010 uh, Facebook looked like, okay? So see anyone who recognizes it, right? 2010. So this is how Facebook looked, uh, you know, almost 10 years ago. Right? Now all this information is useful whenever you are planning an attack. Right? You can always uh, find out what changes were being done, how they were making these changes. Um, so 
the UP years started in 26 and 2020 we have it right in 2010 you had a major change 2013 14 15 16 few changes 17 again few changes 18 and 19 few little changes right so so in october 27 to 2007 right so let's see how ups looked like So, see, a simple website, static website, nothing fancy, okay, no drop down menus, nothing, but simple menus, programs offered, okay, oil, gas, transportation, power, mining, not cyber, that was bad, but yeah, that's how in 2007 it used to look like, okay, so all these websites or all these ways, uh, you know, you can actually figure out different ways of looking at things now uh, a lot of times uh, you use google okay you can also use another website called DuckDuckGo. Okay. this is uh, uh, now google is supposed to uh, uh, collect all the information that you browse or you access okay. but DuckDuckGo provides you privacy they don't collect information okay bing is from uh, again another uh, website uh, yahoo.com Okay, now let's look at Google. Right? So Google is basically an American company specializing in international internet related uh, services. They provide software, uh, hardware also. You get Google Glass, you get Google Watches. Uh, they also do cloud hosting. Uh, they also have a search engine. Okay? So the idea is to provide you relevant search results and uh, very quickly. Okay? They translate uh, languages. Uh, so Google hacking, uh, when you come to you know, something that is uh, relevant to this session right now when i say google hacking it is not uh, people always take google as a search engine that can be used to find text images videos news right? however in the infosec cyber world uh, google has a very you know unique role now it can be used to as a very useful hacking tool you cannot although hack websites directly but it's a tremendous uh, web crawling uh, capability that can be you know used by people almost index everything that is around, around those websites or portals or you know, web, uh, web systems and which can contain some sensitive information. Now this can include uh, usernames, uh, it can also include passwords, uh, some general vulnerabilities that you know you may not be knowing is available there. Okay? So basically Google dorking or Google hacking is finding out vulnerabilities of any uh, web applications or information or stuff that is not there when you do a basic search or you know, just do a generic search. And uh, Google hacking is basically a passive information gathering or footprinting technique, uh, which can help you discover data uh, exposure or some security misconfiguration in websites. Uh, it involves using specialized query operators. Okay. Now, dark means basically somebody with very odd interests. Okay. And uh, dogs are people who are really themselves. They don't care what other people think about themselves. Okay, so they are, you know, they, they are, the way they are, they come about, you know, in your face kind of people, and they, they have very odd interests. So that is dork, basically. <laughs> so advanced Google methods is basically dorking or using operators, right? And uh, the idea is to have a hidden vertical search engine which finds out secret information or files, videos, pictures. Okay? It can also find vulnerabilities uh, in configuration of websites and uh, devices on search on internet you can also find out leaked passwords or even sensitive information or sensitive documents and very you know secret information okay now docs basically uh, constructs very specific high powered google search okay so and there, there are some uh, uh, operators that are used for example in title this, this basically tells google to show only those pages having their term in their html title all in title is similar to uh, in title, but it looks for all the specific terms in that title. In turn, basically searches for specified item in the URL. Okay. File type searches for a specific file type. For example, if I say file type equal to PDF, it will tell me only PDF. Or PDF file type equal to doc, it will tell me only documents. Okay. Uh, in text searches for context. 
content on the web page site basically limits your search to a specific site if i say site xyz okay dot com so only that site will be searched by google okay now why we are you know trying to use these high powered google search operators is i'll show you so if i uh, do a search if i search about myself okay, dr akarji bhagwaj okay so i get around 1 lakh 82000 searches okay now if i calculate this in terms of hours if i take 1 minute to you know look at every search result i'll take 3033 dot 33 hours if i take 5 minutes to you know do those all these searches i take a little more if i take 1 hour per search okay these 1 lakh 82 searches results that google tells me uh, i'll take around 182 and so many hours right in terms of days right if i take 1 minute so i'll take 126 days okay 5 minutes it will be some 631 days 1 hour it will be 7 uh, 7583.33 3 hours or days if i take 1 minute in terms of month it will take me 10 months and 53 10.50 or almost one and a half months to look at all my all these 1 lakh 82 results okay, now again that's huge okay, just a name right so what is the way out right now remember we talked about having sensitive you know specific information search okay and not going all the way you know all over the place so if i put a quotation marks across this right so i would just get very few searches 600 something okay by just putting commas or quotation marks right you guys can also try try opening google okay write your name or anyone names anyone you know famous or anyone you like okay do a google search and see how many about you get you get a huge number okay if you do a quotation mark in front of them okay you would get a lot more specific and a lot more you know lesser and relevant results okay can somebody confirm uh, they are able to understand what i'm talking about okay prasad raised his hand which is good all right okay so i take that yes for everyone 3 4 5 okay five more pastors friends raise their hands that's good all right cool so let's proceed now we looking at a uh, google as a tool right so whenever you are uh, looking at information okay so you can also click on uh, tools all right and then drop it down to past one year okay it would also it would give you only those results uh, for the last one year only right because you don't want to have you know last 10 years results and so many years right so if you do go to tools go to open google do a search click on tools okay and choose past one year so you will get only information about past one year or if you to choose one month you would get only information related to a month only all right so that is being focused and you know trying to figure out interesting information that is relevant right not something that was 10 years old okay also you can eliminate information um, one by one Uh, by using uh, something called as uh, minus and then to delete that domain the minus domain right so everything about akarji bhardwaj ups okay but not inside ups.ac.in domain okay you will get that information okay so if you execute this on your on your browser or in your system okay uh, you would get a lot more relevant results Okay. Now, let me show you something interesting. Right now, a lot of times, uh, you know, I also work with the cyber cell, the police guys. Okay. Um, they also do a lot of searches. So, if you in, open images dot google dot com, right, and then try to figure out or find out image people from their images, right. so for example
So are you guys able to uh, view Google Maps, right? Can somebody confirm he's able to see or you're able to see what I'm doing here? Yes, sir, we can, you know, okay. is visible to us. Okay, okay. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting up an image, okay, and then searching based on that image. Right? Now it says, gentlemen, so I'll remove this. I'll just say apparently, okay. So I'm basically what I'm doing is putting up a photograph as well as, well as a name, all right? So it the color of my dress is blue so it's actually giving you all blue information and all these things but if you go to pages that are that include matching images right so what i'm doing is i'm writing a name as well as a image so i'm using google to do two things right apart from writing i'm also uploading my image right so i go here right so it will also give you a little more you know detailed stuff uh, related to only my name and my photograph okay so i just get two uh, you know links right one is ups.irnis okay and then something about citations and this and that all right okay so that's this is one way of you know focusing or reducing your search down to specific information that you want all right so All right. So if we do a search by Google and then a name, you get a little more information. Now you can also do, uh, you use Google to find out, uh, you know, a lot of stuff which is sensitive or secret. Uh, for example, you can find out passwords of databases files. So of kind of written file type, SQL inside pass and user. Okay. So if you type this on your system, you would typically end up getting a lot of passwords of very sensitive passwords. Uh, you, you can also do DB password after 2019. Okay, so if you type this command or this uh, not, uh, character set uh, in Google, you will get a configuration file with passwords. Okay, so I leave this as an assignment for you guys. You can run this and then find out. And the, the funny part is it's available on the internet by Google. Okay. Um, if you want to find out uh, live cameras, okay, so in curl, control, user images, HTML, if you type this, you can easily get a lot of live cameras, links to live cameras, okay, or open cameras, if you say current time, uh, in curl top, okay? you get a lot of open cameras. Uh, you can also find out uh, hidden emails and people details, all right? So, Now, another way of finding out more information about people, again, without alerting them is using some websites called 411.com, okay? So if you search 411.com and do people, okay? Uh, if you have some information about what, where they stay, uh, typically this works for US, so, uh, and not so much for India. So you would find out their addresses, their contacts, their wives, their daughters, you know, a lot of, you get a lot of information about, you know, without alerting them, right? They don't know about it and uh, it, at times it is a paid service. Uh, so if you pay them and, you know, become their part, become their member, uh, they actually provide you their addresses, their physical addresses, their phone numbers and everything. Okay. Another uh, website to use is uh, truepeoplesearch.com. Okay. So a lot of websites or uh, you know organizations uh, use this to do a reverse search on people they are hiring. For example, when you go to the industry, IT industry, uh, and you give your resume, you have all the details. So the HR team there actually uses you know these links. Find out uh, if you've been you know convicted or you know any any background search. They do a lot of background search on you. What have you been posting on you know Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn? Another uh, website is whitepages.in, whitepages.in, which can again tell you a lot of stuff about people. And uh, they don't even know that this 
you know, stuff exists about them and it's there and available there. Being verified is also another website. So all these three, four websites, uh, you know, we can do a lot of uh, search about people. Okay, so 411.com, truepeoplesearch.com, whitepages.in, uh, being verified. Okay. Now, uh, as a last part here, we just have five minutes. So uh, we'll try and uh, decode in hidden information. So now imagine uh, I want to send out a secret message to my friend. Okay, I want to send him an email. So I, if I send out an email, that can be traced by the police or you know anyone uh, who is monitoring my email. But if I send him an image, right, I hide my message within that image and send it to my friend. Right? So let's then uh, there's a password that we can set on that image. So let's see if we can do that. The tools that we require for this is uh, we need your selfie, okay, and we need to open this website. Okay, beautify converter image stereography. Okay. Try and opening. Try and open this website on your uh, page. Okay, beautifyconverter.com slash image steganography dot php. Okay, are you able to see this? Anybody can confirm image technography tool? Okay, Rahul, Sarin can see it. Okay, right. So what I do is I open this website. Now I want to send a message, all right, to Rahul, for example. Right. So what I do is I select any file, okay, and I can um, say, "Hi, Rahul." Uh, fine. Let's on. So this is a secret message that I am trying to send it to him. Okay, and I say one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is the password that I am setting it for the image. Right? The image is t1.png. Okay. So this is the image. Okay. So let's save it. So I say, Rahul, .png, I save it, okay. Now, when I open this image, So can you see my screen, right? Hello? Yeah, okay. So Rahul, if you, uh, and everyone, sorry, <laughs> I'm pulling Rahul here. Uh, so you, anyone trying to open uh, this image, right? It's rahul.png, okay? So he would just see a photograph, right? Nothing more, okay, right? So, but actually it's actually having a hidden uh, agenda here, right? So what we do is we go back, Right. So, so this is the other guy. So I sent it to somebody. Uh, so he needs to open this. So he he receives this image, right? So he puts in Rahul.png. So there's a password one two three four. Okay. So he says decode. Right. So this is the password that I that the hidden image or the secret message that I was sending it to him, and he receives it. No other guy can actually uh, you know imagine or hope that it's there. So these are simple ways uh, where we can use uh, cryptography or you know cyber security to actually save our uh, you know, secret information or data or anything, or use it in a malicious way or a positive way. Okay. Right. So 
So this is all I had uh, to tell you about today. Uh, we just about reached 4 p.m. Right. So for any uh, certificate criteria, uh, you know, use your real name or you know the actual name in order to get the certificate. Right. Your email ID uh, so that the marketing team or the UP team can send you that certificate. Okay. And uh, to contact them, just email inquiry at the rate UPS. All right. Or call on these numbers. All right. So that is about it on my side. Any questions you have, I can take them now. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. It's uh, a very practical session that we had. And uh, you know, I request all the participants uh, to uh, you know, if you have any queries, please write it on the chat box. And I request you, sir, so you know, to uh, you know, again uh, talk about the assignment for the day, because most of the students are not clear uh, what will be the assignment. Sure. And, sure. Uh, uh, participants, uh, you have to send your assignment, uh, you know, to inquiry at the rate ups.ac.in email id where you'll be sending your assignments uh, for the previous sessions as well do mention your name workshop name and day five this is today is the last day for the session so day five you have to mention in the subject line of the email uh, over to you sir so you'll be sharing this uh, with the students or uh, what uh, can you can you repeat your question, sir? So, will you be sharing uh, this, or the, should the students take uh, screenshots of? Uh, yes, I mean uh, the students can oh, okay. take the screenshot okay. of the presentation. Okay. Understood. Uh, you okay. can you can have uh, the assignment uh, slide uh, visible on the screen. So, yeah, 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 sure. so students can take. Them. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the assignment for today is searching for people, right? Now, how do you search for people? I have already told you, right? So. Try and figure out, try and find out the way I am using it, right? Google and then search a name or say Narendra Modi or Rahul Gandhi or you know Trump or anyone you like, okay? Or not any political, maybe any heroine also, right? That'll do. Um, and then find out how much you can reduce them because see, you see here is 81 lakh 82 thousand results, right? Uh, but how do I result? How do I reduce that to you know 600, 400, you know something? So that is the game here, okay? So this is. Assignment one or you know, question one for you. The next assignment or the next question is basically uh, try to reduce uh, the search using tool from Google again. How much do you get it? Take a screenshot the way I've taken it. Take a screenshot, put it on a Word document, and then send it uh, in your email. Save it as a doc docx file and not as a PDF or anything else. Otherwise, the size would go will be very big. Okay. How do you reduce for example you said uh, you know past one year and you get got some information then you eliminate uh, information one by one okay so you say minus domain one then again minus domain two right and then see how yourself how you can reduce or you know focus on more uh, you know searches or more information that you can find out okay and then also do a search using photographs right go to images.google.com okay uh, upload your image okay Type in uh, your name as well, and or somebody else's name, and then see what you get. Right. So that would be a very directed, very simple uh, search. Uh, also, another thing that I would want you guys to do is open um, some of the stuff uh, that I told you. Uh, 